the rising tide of credential inflation in Canada. In today's highly competitive job market, having a good education is often seen as a prerequisite for success. In Canada, a country known for its commitment to quality education, there has been a concerning trend of credential inflation. This phenomenon refers to the devaluation of educational credentials due to their increasing prevalence and the subsequent need for individuals to attain higher levels of education to secure desirable jobs. Coming out of university there's a tendency to believe that you're trained as well as educated, which is not actually true. Unlike his studious heir apparent brother, the 53-year-old prince never attended university, and has recently emerged as a British champion of post-secondary alternatives, urging young UK citizens to take up apprenticeships and earn their spurs in the business world before going to university. That way, he said, you're going into university as a trained person, you're not coming out as an untrained person. The prince's remarks are well-timed. After two decades of rapidly rising enrollment, half of British university leavers are unemployed or in low-skilled jobs. According to the country's business secretary, thousands more are still in school sweating out a degree that is superfluous to their chosen careers. The idea that in order to be a police officer or a nurse you have to have a degree, I mean, that is just qualification inflation, business secretary Vince Cable told a London conference in November. The situation is similarly grim in Canada. 51% of Canadian adults achieved tertiary qualification, the highest among OECD countries. At the same time, in this ever-expanding pool of degree holders, Canada also tops OECD rankings for the largest share of these graduates making less than the national median income. We are number one when it comes to university and college enrollments, but we are also number one in the number of people with university degrees that live in poverty, said Benjamin Tal, deputy chief economist with CIBC World Markets. Canadians often complain that a university education is too expensive, too unattainable, and too scarce. But in a country plagued by bloated universities, rising degree holder unemployment and a credentialism arms race that shows no signs of stopping, Canada's real problem may be too much, not too little, university. Rapid technological advancements and globalization have transformed the nature of work, resulting in increased demand for specialized skills. As a response, individuals pursue higher education to gain an edge in the job market, leading to an oversupply of graduates with similar qualifications. The increasing prevalence of higher education qualifications has led to a devaluation of degrees. A bachelor's degree, once considered a significant achievement, has become the minimum requirement for many entry-level positions. This devaluation undermines the efforts and investments made by individuals pursuing higher education. Credential inflation often compels individuals to pursue additional degrees or certifications, resulting in increased student debt. Many students are forced to take on significant financial burdens, hampering their financial stability and delaying their ability to contribute to the economy through savings, investments, or entrepreneurial ventures. Since employers frequently raise the bar for entry-level positions, individuals with higher qualifications may end up in jobs that do not fully utilize their education and skills. This leads to underemployment and frustration among individuals who have invested significant time and resources in their education. Getting a master's degree, oddly, only seems to make things worse. According to the 2011 National House Survey, rates of unemployment for holders of master's degrees were actually higher than those only holding bachelor's degrees. The rising number of international students at Canadian colleges has been a major trend in Canadian post-secondary education for over a decade. The first phase of the rise was in 2009 to 2015, coinciding with changes in immigration policy. In 2009, immigrants began being admitted under the newly created Canadian Experience Class, which was introduced to facilitate transitions to permanent residency for temporary foreign workers, including those who had been international students. The number of international students studying in colleges rose from 37,000 in 2009-2010 to 58,000 in 2014-2015. These increases accelerated in the following years, with the number of international students attending Canadian colleges rising to 153,000 by 2018-19. By 2019, international students made up over a quarter, 27%, of all graduates from Canadian public colleges. The BC Construction Association, which estimates it alone is facing a 30,000 job shortage, asserts it is bearing the consequences of a culture that never got over its obsession with the degree. Parents believe that university as higher education is automatically the best choice to provide their children with a secure career, said Association President Manley McLaughlin. 
There is also a status element here which cannot be ignored. A cultural bias exists against the trades as a credible career option for smart students. Last year, as part of its campaign to sound the alarm on Canada's skills gap, the Conference Board of Canada probably illustrated the disparity best when it found that Canada led much of the developed world in getting citizens into college and university, but lagged considerably when it came time to spin those graduates off into the workplace. Most notably, the in-demand fields of science, math, computer science, and engineering were in their third year of decline. Emphasizing alternative pathways to careers, such as vocational training, apprenticeships, and industry certifications, can help diversify the skill sets of individuals entering the job market. This approach recognizes that not all desirable skills require a traditional university education. Across the Atlantic, at least, Prince Andrew, who just launched the Duke of York's award, an accolade for technical achievement, is putting his faith in a new system of British vocational schools. I didn't go to university, he told the Telegraph. I went straight to the Navy and did an apprenticeship as a pilot. University is icing on the cake rather than a route to market. Providing comprehensive career guidance and counseling services can help individuals make informed decisions about their educational choices. This support can help align their aspirations with the most appropriate educational pathways, reducing the likelihood of pursuing unnecessary degrees. Credential inflation in Canada poses significant challenges for individuals, society, and the education system. It devalues degrees, increases financial burdens, creates skills job mismatches, and strains educational resources. Addressing this issue requires a multifaceted approach that emphasizes alternative pathways, promotes skills-based hiring practices, and offers robust career guidance. By taking proactive measures, Canada can mitigate the negative consequences of credential inflation and foster a more inclusive and efficient job market that values skills, experience, and diversity.